Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash. Today we're going to be talking about something very interesting that I found. We're going to be talking about deleted concepts from The Flash Season 1, 2, and 3. And so we got a lot to go through, and I think you guys will be very excited by this because I got a whole list of stuff that I found online. So if you do go on to enjoy the video and you want any videos similar to this, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos as we head towards our shows coming back. So just before we get into this main topic, remember guys you can become members of the channel and get exclusive videos, exclusive video reviews. The first one is going to be WandaVision this week by clicking the join button. So go check it out, thank you for your support, and let's go ahead and get into this. So deleted scenes, deleted concepts, deleted storylines, all of that. That's what we're going to be talking about here. We're going to go through season one, two, and three. I didn't want to go over season four and five because there's a bit less and it's also more recent. So let's go over the older stuff first. I think it's a little bit more interesting. So the first scene we're going to be talking about is this one, and this one was actually filmed. The thing is with this list, most of the stuff actually wasn't filmed, and this is one of the only ones that was filmed. And so what happens in this scene is a Barry Allen, before he gets powers, discusses reports to Joe about a man who can bend steel with his bare hands in Starling City, and a man who can talk to fish in Amnesty Bay. And so he discusses this with Joe, and I mean, it's pretty obvious what he's referring to here. That being the Man of Steel, Superman, and also Aquaman. You know, a man who can talk to fish, a man who can bend steel with his bare hands. Obviously, that's a direct reference to the superheroes that we know and have actually shown up on the show apart from Aquaman. So, yeah, very interesting. That was cut. That was actually filmed. So that got a bit further than some of these storylines, and some of these may shock you. So let's go ahead and go through the list. So Barry uses his forensic science abilities to determine his enemy's weaknesses and defeat them. This was changed so that the rest of the team, that being Team Flash, could have a more active role in the missions. So that's why you have Cisco, that's why you have Iris, that's why you have Tom Cavanaugh's Harrison Wells, you have Caitlin Snow. They all have their own different kind of skill sets that they kind of add up together and they catch the criminals together so it isn't just Barry's forensic abilities to determine how to defeat his enemies it's a team effort and so the next storyline is Eddie was originally supposed to be a sort of hotshot police detective and he dislikes Barry and then he transfers to Central City accidentally killing his partner that was the reason for his transferring and he covers it up to protect his career so that's what his story was originally supposed to be but they changed it as they thought making Barry's rival a nice guy was a more interesting take so that would have been an interesting take on Eddie he's obviously basically the complete opposite of that he's very nice and he is sort of like a rival for Barry but let's move on to the next one so Iris was originally supposed to be a psychology student at the CCPD who is interning and as a junior criminal profiler as it says and so this was changed to be closer to the comics where she's a reporter and I think this change was for the best actually and I like that Iris and Joe you know have this kind of relationship and Joe is the one in the CCPD and not Iris and I like that Iris is a journalist because it's more like the comics okay so another change was that Caitlin was originally supposed to be older and had a past relationship with Harrison Wells and so apparently she was aged down to replace Hartley, who obviously has come back a few times, Pied Piper, and her partner was changed to be Ronnie Raymond to be closer to the comics. So I think this is a very good change, and I like the dynamic between Caitlin and Harrison Wells, and yes, Wells is older and Caitlin is younger. I think it's good that Caitlin is more, you know, Cisco's age and more Barry's age, or at least pretty close, considering that they are supposed to be like really good friends, best friends, and it just makes more sense and I do like Harrison Wells and Joe you know being around and being like these kind of father figures to the team because I think it works really well and so originally Hartley Pied Piper was supposed to be part of the team and has a friendly rivalry with Cisco and is initially more concerned with salvaging his career than protecting the scene this has changed to streamline the cast he was removed and Caitlin took over his role and so basically yeah the team was slimmed down and obviously over the years the team has grown up again but yeah that's why he isn't around so joe is killed by the mist in the pilot episode this was changed because they wanted to keep jesse l martin around because he was such a good actor and 
I think they totally made the right decision. It would have been such a shame if they didn't do that. Okay, so Snart and Rory, that being Captain Cold and Heatwave, are matter humans. This has changed to be closer to the comics where they are just normal and they have weapons, you know, cold gun, heat gun, stuff like that. Dr. Light was supposed to be a metahuman who was a former Star Lab scientist seeking revenge against Wells. This was in the end changed and obviously she did show up again, but not until a bit later. And so Hartley took over this role, that being Pied Piper, and he was going around. He used to work for Star Labs, he was seeking revenge against Wells. That's exactly what happened there. Barry and Caitlin would be together. This was apparently something that was going to happen. This was changed after Grant Gustin suggested that they speed up the Barry slash Iris relationship. I think they totally made the right call here because they're great together and it's how it is in the comics and how it's meant to be with the Flash, especially Barry Allen, because Iris, you know, is basically a big definitive part of the character in the comics as well. All right, let's move on to season two. So we've got a bunch of other deleted stuff and deleted storylines to go through. So Zoom was originally Earth 2's Barry Allen. This was changed because the writers fell in love with Jay Garrick and Hunter Zolomon and the twist that they were planning. So they used most of it as Earth 2 Barry's original characterization for Hunter and it obviously changed and I think they made the right decision because the twist that Zoom was actually Jay Garrick thought that was brilliant and so yeah Jay is not Zoom but a roguish speedster from Earth 2 who joins forces with Barry to stop Zoom. They clash at first but slowly become friends and Jay grows to become a true hero and so Jay actually being a good speedster and being friends with Barry that was changed because of the Hunter Zolomon Zoom twist. Okay moving on to the next point Patty was supposed to stick around she would learn Barry's secret identity and join Team Flash. She would have likely been promoted to the main cast in season 3 that was changed, and recently we heard it's because the showrunner had a problem with Chantel, which is a little bit controversial because was it that he didn't want her, so he specifically was like, nope, Patty's not coming back. So let me know your opinions on that, that is probably one of the most controversial twists in the story and in the show. But let's move on to the next bit. Iris would actually end up dating her editor, Scott Evans, for a while since Barry and Patty were not supposed to break up so soon. That was changed because they were broken up, Patty was sent away from the show, and you had Iris and Barry's relationship sped up, which in the end, I think that's good. Okay, so Ronnie was supposed to stick around in season 2, but had to be killed off and replaced by Jax when Robbie and Mel couldn't commit to Legends of Tomorrow, and that's why Jax was brought on board and you had him coming over to Legends of Tomorrow and so that's why he basically replaced him as Firestorm. Talking about Firestorm, General Eiling was supposed to stick around as a recurring antagonist for him but he was cut when Ronnie was killed and Stein and Jax moved to Legends of Tomorrow. So no big complaints there because General Eiling was very small and he basically did nothing. Anyway, Legends of Tomorrow was originally envisioned as a mid-season show. Snart and Rory were at one point supposed to come back to the Flash to keep assembling the rogues. The rogues has never really panned out on the Flash. They've tried it many times, but it's never actually come to fruition. And so talking about the rogue storyline, Mirror Master and Dr. Alchemy would be introduced as part of the rogue storyline. Obviously, Dr. Alchemy was added in season three as Julian Albert, played by Tom Felton, and Mirror Master did show up as well. So, the real Jay Garrick was originally planned to be Earth 3's Eddie Fawn rather than Earth 3's Henry Allen. But this was obviously changed when they came up with the idea oh, we want to bring back someone, well, specifically John Wesley Shipp, who looks like Barry's dad, and it would be better than him being Eddie Thorne, which I 100% agree with. Okay, so now let's move on to season 3. There are a few changes here, but not as many that is specifically noted. So, the writers admitted that they did not fully planned the season, which resulted in a few forgotten plot points, and this includes Star Labs Museum, which they set up, you had the Red Death stuff mentioned in there, you had Savitar's plans for Jesse, he teased that something big was coming for Jesse, and nothing actually happened to Jesse, and so also the appearance of the Accelerated Man was another example where they planned something, but they actually didn't continue on with it, so yeah, Season 3 had a few things that they kind of forgot about, and they never went back to. Also, Mirror Master and Top were supposed to replace Captain Cold and Heatwave as the leaders of the rogues in Season 3, but fans didn't respond to them, and 
it never actually happened and so they were written out and the rogue storyline was axed. The rival at some point was considered for a recurring role as Wally's villain and Savitar would be Barry's but that never actually came to be. Though he did appear a few times he actually never became a proper recurring villain. He was essentially Flashpoint's main villain. And so the final thing, Julian was supposed to struggle against Savitar's influence and the return of Dr. Alchemy throughout the season but never really did after Team Flash freed him in the mid-season finale so Julian was essentially changed. So that's it for today's video, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment and in the comment remember to let me know do you think this stuff should have happened? Maybe some of it should have actually been included in the seasons? Let me know your opinions down below. But for now thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.